Democratic Rally Party do. So I believe that one of the reasons that um, there wasn't a more organized form of the extreme right is that. And on the other hand, perhaps it's the only place left for something to exist, and that's why it managed to survive. Even this small group of uh, Golden Dawn, Chrissy Avier, in its Cypriot uh, version, managed to survive. We have another question over here. On the same lines of the questions of uh, the previous question about uh, uh, party politics versus politics, I wanted to small, make him a small comment and add that these part, the parties as such had and all, still have the theory that if somebody wants to become politicized, they have to join a political party. This uh, view of things is uh, what creates this situation that exists. The parties themselves do not allow with their, their, their theory. We heard comments in Parliament, as Harry said earlier, similar comments. When we were speaking about the horizontal voting, they say, why horizontal? You've got to be part of a party in order to vote. Why? And it seems very strange to them that people, the representative of Agel, so, but it's uh, 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 incomprehensible. You've got to belong to a doctrine to vote. How can you just vote for people? And so, therefore, you have to have a if you like, an education of the political parties for them to accept that there, somebody could be very political but not party political and he can, who can act. And this is what uh, Transparency and other organizations. I'm from Eleftheria, another organization, one of the organizations which uh, was mentioned before. So therefore, we must pass the message that we could be political, we have a responsibility to be political, but not necessarily in part. Thank you. Anyone else? It's a specific question, and it concerns the Red Cross. I don't know if Mr. Francis is here. You said that uh, the Red Cross intervenes in uh, asylum seeker reception centers in Gofino and Manoya. My question is... Um, relevant uh, uh, as to whether there are systematic interventions. Do you go a few times a week or a month? Or if you just go when somebody phones that there's a crisis and you need to intervene, uh, do you have a weekly or monthly program of visits? Thank you for your question. Specifically, we agreed on a plan with uh, the center in Menoya, a series of activities has been decided on for psychosocial support. And secondly, provision of humanitarian assistance in kind. Uh, we have uh, submitted a proposal to carry out a survey of a psychosocial uh, content, and we're waiting for approval from the ministry in order to be able to implement this. At the same time, we are in uh, deliberations in order to put down a time frame for the provision of psychological uh, services. I can't say that um, we are at the desired level, but we are moving forward in positive uh, uh, positive rates. Specifically, in the last three months, we had four interventions of systematic humanitarian aid in kind and psychosocial support. With the la latest things have been going on, uh, I don't, there's been quite a lot of uh, cases uh, at the center. We contacted them and we're trying to exert pressure to have more access. You know what the governmental pressure is or how we can exert pressure on them. We're trying to do as much as we can. And something that I missed was that um, we have two teachers who in the next couple of weeks are going to start lessons to teaching people Greek at Menoya. Yeah. 
I don't know if we've got any more questions, but we really have to go ahead. Is there somebody who's really quick, or I think we should go straight ahead in order to be able to listen to the speeches? Last, last question, the very last question. No, it's just something to do with the previous question about um, your actions uh, with um, this vulnerable group of the population. I don't know the work of the Red Cross so well in this area, but I know that there are many organizations in Cyprus that deal with this issue because there's a lack of action by the state, a lack of interest, I would say, mainly from the state. I wanted to know if these actions, uh, you take them by them yourselves, whether there is networking with other organizations that specialize in this issue of um, illegal immigrants or asylum seekers in Cyprus. Because I would say that in time of crisis, social and economic uh, networking uh, between uh, social uh, civil society organizations should be more networked because there are fewer resources and perhaps the staff uh, is uh, reduced. I'm just trying to understand whether this networking has uh, will be strengthened in Cyprus or already has, and this is an example without knowing if this is a traditional place, space that you're in, if there's contact with other organizations that specialize in this field, and if not, if there could be in future, if you think that the future will depend on networking uh, for strengthening of relations and actions. Thank you for the question. Specifically, there is networking, there is coordination with other organizations um, on matters of uh, migration. Uh, the Cyprus Red Cross, I wouldn't say is at the, has been at the forefront in the last years, but from last year, since last year, we have a newly set up uh, migration committee and we participate in new HCR strategy for 2014, and the aim was to have a real coordination among the organizations. An agenda was put uh, forward which we, I could analyze. One of the main topics, uh, issues, is to be a, a lever of pressure on the media. Um, now, as regards um, co co consortia and so on, we've begun to work with the specific organizations in order to promote the rights of migrants. Again, we're at the stage in a process of strengthening this uh, mechanism of um, migration. In the next uh, three months, we will be in a position to have uh, put forward specific actions. Thank you. We have to be strict. We have to go f f on. Just have in mind a question, uh, Alice, and we'll link in our minds what there is today, because there is a history of NGOs here in Cyprus, which uh, work in philanthropy, charity more and um, humanitarianism, how these are changing as things change. I begin with Alexandra Taledo. You all know her. She is the acting head of the European Parliament of When we talk about uh, civil society, at the same time, we refer to non-existent or inadequate state policies, those policies which society is called upon to replace. In other words, we speak about a society of active citizens called upon to cover the gaps left by crises, political, social, economic, uh, but great uh, importance for civil society and for NGOs is by the um, consequences of the crisis since while they create space for action, for example, through social um, stores, shops, and other actions that we all know about, at the same time, limit the resources that are necessary for the viability of some of these actions. Indeed, when, especially when the consequences of the crisis are extended on the worldwide uh, level, then one can understand that the difficult uh, task of finding uh, resources is more, even more difficult and uh, causes uh, such problems of um, NGOs. 
at the European level, the role of civil society not only is fully in accordance, but also completes the vision for a united and democratic uh, Europe. Uh, a necessary role of the civil society is made clear through the Lisbon Treaty, Article 15, which recognizes the importance of the participation of civil society in um, good uh, European governance. It is not an accident that the European Parliament has instituted the uh, institution of the Agora, the Forum, as in ancient Greece, which every year opens an open forum in order to create a consensus or to put forward different views within society civil society about the analyses and actions that must be undertaken in order to tackle the challenges of the EU, such as the um, present uh, economic crisis, as well as uh, climate change, as well as um, the defense of human rights, uh, violence against women, and many other issues which Cyprus must uh, at last uh, tackle seriously. In Cyprus, the relatively uh, young and inexperienced uh, civil society, although it does uh, um, include uh, some of the best and most uh, most noble and sincere visions of our society, is now uh, uh, hostage to lost liquidity and the lack of co cooperation with the state, but um, among the organizations themselves. It has not also not managed to involve in its actions a very large part of civil society, of Cyprus society. There are there are pure intentions, but Cyprus civil society is unfortunately rather weak and, and, and small. Apart, of course, and I must make it clear, when I talk about civil society, I mean as a whole and not uh, just charity organize, charitable organizations because we know that there, there is important action. But that's not really what civil society is as is specified by the European Union. It's something more than that. Uh, in view of the increased need for action by NGOs and the uh, simultaneous reduction of the opportunities to find resources, please allow me to raise certain issues which we need answers. First, the actions on the part of NGOs aimed at limiting their dependence on funding and the strengthening of their viability uh, as an offset of the consequences of the crisis. And this can be done through programs or projects of the European Union which um, do not involve uh, um, uh, dependence or independence when, when you get uh, money from the EU or have a project. The actions of the NGOs in order to strengthen the ability of participation in the decision making uh, process as part of the strategy to reinforce uh, their viability and the democratic aspect of the institutions. Targeted actions by NGOs in order to approach and awaken uh, society as a whole and not just the usual suspects. In inverted commas, we all know, we know us. Actions on the part of uh, the state uh, to support the work of NGOs and to promote cooperation between state and uh, uh, and um, and them in order to exchange practices and knowledge. From my 30 years experience in civil society, I must say that accession to the EU has helped uh, in this area because many services are forced to have consultations uh, with civil society and to include views, uh, for example, on matters of the environment. Whereas early, pre previously, during the 80s, when we organized the Friends of Akamas, they wouldn't, nobody wanted to hear uh, about uh, this. The people who were deciding what was going to happen, the national park, and so they wouldn't listen to us. Now they have an obligation to listen to us. Now what happens after that? Well, we'll talk about that later in the actions of the citizens themselves in order to have the active support of civil society um, so that they don't just uh, become apathetic. Through the crisis, well, with the crisis trying to un uh, undermining the viability of civil society, the main question does not cease to be the quality of our political culture. The education of citizens must aim, among other things, at understanding the importance of being an active citizen and also to recognize the benefits that they can uh, glean from the existence of a powerful and effective civil society, both uh, for the citizens citizens, but also for political leadership. They have a lot to gain from 
a strong civil society. The main perception of Cypriot citizens about the role of civil society, which they take mainly as um, an agent of uh, charity, is indicative of the inadequate education, uh, our inadequate education. Uh, civil society does not come from this and certainly is not exhausted by in charity. Suffice it to think for a moment about the results that we could, could have through organized pressure by NGOs for better and more effective participation of women in decision-making um, uh, process in order to under oh, the environment, uh, uh, the defense and uh, the protection of the rights of foreign uh, migrants or other vulnerable groups, and many other issues which for Europe are uh, the sine qua non, that civil society is involved and uh, expresses views that are heard by those who vote uh, and uh, decide. Finally, at a time when the economic crisis uh, gives an um, opportunity for xenophobia, I would like to mention the very important role of NGOs and civil society in achieving and cultivating mutual understanding, tolerance acceptance of difference, of difference and of social peace in our country. In addition to this, the acti- acti- activity in the par excellence most important sector of solving the Cyprus problem and reunification of Cyprus is of fundamental importance. The civil society itself must uh, utilize the opportunity it's given and the state has a responsibility to involve it in the efforts to achieve peace with uh, and uh, settlement in order to uh, create and to give a new breath to the whole process, that is to say, to hear the the grassroots as well before we come to the result. But perhaps, and having experience from the past, in order to avoid the bad experience of the past, which allowed many citizens uh, to be attacked, citizens who worked in this direction, the state itself specifically in this area to reinforce with full transparency these organizations so that they don't have to resort for their actions to programs that from any other source which um, will uh, stain their image if you like. So therefore the state itself must reinforce those organizations that are involved in this issue that wish to be involved and to contribute to the dialogue for the solution of the Cyprus problem by reinforcing them so that we don't have the problems that we had earlier. Thank you. Thank you, Alexandra. Uh, you introduced a new subject about the participation of NGOs in the Cyprus problem. We now, uh, Yanis Gannagis, who's a Commissioner of Volunteerism and NGOs, will speak to us now. First of all, I I would uh, like to say uh, we spoke about uh, modern volunteerism. It has to cover all the various sectors of our society and uh, uh, not only the um, I mean, the, today, the volunteer, the volunteerism, uh, they do adjust to the immediate needs of the society at this moment. But when we will overcome this crisis, the movement uh, has to become active in all sectors of the society. And it is very important as well, I mean, the role that uh, NGOs play at uh, the uh, European and uh, national level. It is our policy as a government, as a, st- a state, to uh, support uh, their activation their active participation um, at um, uh, the and we do connect our policies to European policies it's very important uh, volunteers is very important as it has been mentioned uh, very important is the active participation of the citizen and particularly young people and this aims also at uh, fighting uh, unemployment and you have to connect both you want synergies in the European Union is something that uh, I mean we could uh, gain uh, uh, many experiences uh, and it is um, 
wrong that the state it's better uh, now than never I mean late than never so um, this is not this does not appear in my title but in my terms of reference uh, there is also uh, the tools uh, to be implemented in order to have the participation of active citizens and the young generation and we have uh, other people I mean other organizations participating the church uh, only uh, for volunteer organizations and other NGOs so as I said uh, before, uh, the uh, NGOs and uh, the uh, volunteers, uh, they do adjust to the needs of the society and they are flexible, uh, contrary to the state, which is uh, not, uh, which is unflexible and uh, where there is a lot of red tape. At this uh, moment, uh, we've uh, concentrated our efforts on a sector where they have a need. At this very moment, 13,000 families, 45,000 uh, um, persons, individuals, uh, they are supported by different NGOs for simply for food. Uh, I mean, and there is a lot of movement and a lot of help on behalf of uh, uh, the uh, d- uh, of the of the NGOs. Uh, so, and uh, because of the very high unemployment, uh, the mobility of young people has been reduced greatly, and we want to improve that. So we have uh, 400, 4,000, I'm sorry, four thousand one hundred registered uh, uh, NGOs which are registered with the registrar. Uh, so three hundred and thirty NGOs. Uh, uh, no profitable companies, there is no coordination, no control. Uh, the um, legislation is obsolete, dates from many years back. Uh, uh, the, the state does not have any audit or any process to control uh, funding, and uh, there aren't any policies which uh, encourage the active participation of the citizens. What do you want to change? You want to change the law for registration and certification. We are approaching uh, the last stages of changing the law, which will give us a very important tool which will upgrade the uh, movement of volunteerism and uh, grants as uh, was said by the uh, by the president uh, we need to have control and i do hope that uh, during the first um, uh, six months of this uh, year we are going to implement it and uh, also uh, we have uh, to take into account uh, these abilities and uh, these uh, skills uh, that uh, some uh, people they do gain uh, through um, their participation uh, in uh, outside I mean uh, official uh, uh, learning and education when I studied I had uh, nine credits recognized so it means uh, less uh, money uh, because I had uh, a very important uh, volunteer um, work so we had this process uh, with the Ministry of Education to uh, set up a, a map for recognizing this volunteering work because this is a very important element for the participation of young people to volunteers, movement of volunteers, but also the infrastructures is, are very, very important in order to support NGOs and implementation of tools which uh, further encourages the participation of young people. And um, uh, this was mentioned also before in my terms of reference. We do include uh, making use of uh, the um, EU funds, uh, and uh, uh, there is a very important framework. Um, we can get this fund from the European uh, Union and you have to make use of this and uh, also volunteers uh, at the army uh, we have 7,000 of people who are there for two years so we set up a special uh, body for volunteers for uh, uh, militaries or for those working for the army uh, who will uh, support uh, NGOs and um, um, other Uh, actions and uh, they can uh, also propose a number of activities which can take place uh, during their military service. In this way, we wanted to uh, use, I mean, these uh, um, uh, soldiers, I mean, because they are there for two years, during the second year of their service, they have less responsibilities. So this is a very good tool which can help us to further promote volunteerism. This is uh, this was the first uh, meeting we had uh, uh, with 900 uh, uh, serving their military service. Um, this was at Lima. So this one is a public consultation uh, with the, um, uh, on issues of uh, drugs and uh, narcotics. Uh, and um, I gave Savas uh, the leaflet. 
uh, with the responsibilities and rights of the volunteers. This is a document which uh, was also approved by the uh, Council of Ministers. It marries uh, uh, policies uh, between uh, uh, the European Union, I mean, or other uh, organizations of volunteers at uh, the European level. So we have uh, a correct now basis how to operate uh, and uh, uh, operate the um, uh, NGOs. And uh, we have uh, a code of ethics, uh, which is something that uh, was missing. And uh, we've already uh, proceeded with coordinating all those who are uh, very actively involved. Uh, we had a meeting, and uh, then we had the district meetings. And now my office is uh, uh, promoting uh, a new uh, information. I mean, how we are going to uh, also uh, maintain confidentiality, and how can we support human dignity? So we have about 40, or rather 50 agencies um, uh, which uh, support our um, uh, citizens, the citizens of Cyprus, and we do better work. We are more effective, more efficient. The Red Cross, where George, he has left. He's no longer here. Uh, but um, we, a few years back, uh, we had uh, another need for about 800 people, 800 individuals, and we've managed uh, uh, with the help of the Red Cross to cover their needs three days before Christmas. So this means that you can be very, very effective and very efficient. Uh, so this is another public consultation with the minister, with the sorry, with the president of the Republic of Cyprus, for foodstuffs. And uh, uh, this is what I said before that the president is very involved, and that is why we are more effective. So uh, public, uh, the day of public consultation. This is a, a tool, and this was also approved by the Council of Ministers. Um, and we have now what you call the day, uh, public consultation day. We had meetings with uh, targeted groups and uh, spe spe special subjects. And this is going to be reiterated. All the opinions, uh, we take note of all the opinions expressed uh, there. And uh, we follow up uh, the uh, implementation of this um, uh, of these uh, decisions, of these uh, suggestions and uh, recommendations and opinions. And I, th I have to say that it is a very modern tool for uh, Cyprus. It's very important. Important. And this is another public consultation that uh, the President of the Republic of Cyprus had with uh, volunteer organizations, about 200 people. So the, 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 the President uh, was listening to the uh, organizations. It was uh, a very important uh, meeting. Infrastructure, we do uh, realize that infrastructure is a very important element for NGOs. We start with the volunteers' homes. Uh, we start with uh, uh, Larnaca. We started with Larnaca. We have been refurbishing now um, uh, this house. And uh, we are going to have um, uh, common areas like the conference or events uh, um, room. And uh, these are, are going to be used by organizations which are uh, hosted there. And we go on to this way to um, offer and uh, um, so that uh, citizens, I mean, they know where to go and they will find uh, uh, more about uh, what is volunteerism and uh, everybody who managed to uh, get a, a place or I mean because we know somebody so it, it was not correct because there was lack of transparency so we want to have transparency and we want to know how we uh, give um, uh, these uh, buildings and so on and so forth so we think that it's very important and uh, we've uh, uh, listing I mean uh, all these documents uh, in, uh, 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 in Nicosia the church is ready to give us a building uh, to see uh, which premises we can have and uh, with the help of the uh, state to refurbish it, I mean refurbishment of low cost refurbishment in order to be uh, to serve as the home for volunteers. So we are making a lot of progress with uh, infrastructure. I had I have a very good collaboration with the former planning bureau, the DG for coordination of European uh, projects. Uh, there is a website uh, in order to inform there's a special department uh, uh, which comes under the DG for the coordination of European programs. Uh, and uh, we're going to set up the one-stop shop service, which will help us uh, to uh, better inform, to make use of uh, uh, European budgets with the Ministry of Education and Culture. On the one hand, uh, we are trying to uh, recognize uh, the um, uh, 
informal learning, education, and uh, NGOs uh, and uh, the employers and the universities also will participate. I have to tell you that you've uh, also suggested to the ministry uh, to further cultivate volunteerism uh, in connection with education. This hasn't uh, been yet approved uh, by my suggestion. Um, it was that uh, at every school we will uh, uh, nominate one teacher educator uh, to be in charge of volunteerism and also to organize educational trips in order to further cultivate volunteerism. We have a very good cooperation and uh, with NGOs and NGOs so with uh, uh, staff, uh, paid staff, I mean, to train other people. It is extremely important. I'm talking about salaried staff. And there is an effort now, if asked from all NGOs, uh, how many volunteers unemployed they can uh, uh, take in with uh, special interests. Uh, so when we are going to finish with the uh, registration of these people, we are going to send to our unemployed citizens or mainly, um, I mean, unemployed if they want to be part of uh, this uh, movement of volunteerism. At the end of the day, it will be open to all. Local government is uh, very important, uh, and we've approved, uh, uh, I mean, a joint work uh, between all, uh, I mean, every community. They should set up a body with the participation of all NGOs, uh, which are um, at the border, I mean, of each community, and uh, it is very, very important. And I have to tell you that you have uh, 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 I mean, persons who are in charge, I mean, of the active participation. And so we have a contact between my uh, my office and the ministry. It's another tool in addition to the public consultation uh, is uh, working groups, uh, questionnaires, and uh, surveys. Uh, and you're going to decide every four months. And uh, this will depend on the political decision. And uh, this will be implemented in all the services and ministries. Uh, and uh, we do have impediments, of course. We carried out a survey about impediments. When somebody is unemployed, and has other things in his or her mind, the last thing they think about is volunteerism. So you want to change this. Uh, the non-correct information and, uh, and lack of transparency creates problems uh, with uh, NGOs, lack of time, because they think that if they have contributed once, uh, they do not need to contribute uh, more. Um, so as I, I mean, this is a very important percentage. You have to know this. Uh, they do not trust themselves. Uh, and another problem that we have is the way we manage volunteers. It's a very important element uh, because very often they come to ask something and uh, then they, they leave. Uh, they, they do not stay with us. So I encourage them. And uh, I believe that a very uh, good point is uh, to uh, cultivate volunteerism at schools. And uh, uh, transparency, again, will help us a lot. And um, uh, skills, uh, more knowledge, uh, um, and another important information, you're talking about uh, uh, prevention from alcoholism, uh, um, from uh, drugs. Uh, there is no uh, better tool than volunteerism. This is what is demonstrated by surveys. Those who are volunteers, they can avoid this phenomenon. And of course, we can help them in finding jobs and uh, also uh, participation in democratic processes and for the society. And for, I mean, I, I know that the state should support, but unfortunately, at this moment, we do cover shortcomings and uh, gaps by the state. And uh, the GDP, I mean, if we uh, put the real cost of volunteerism, the real cost, uh, this uh, uh, is between 8 to 10 percent. This is a huge percentage of a G GDP in every country. So all volunteers, uh, uh, if they were public servants who used to work in the afternoons and uh, over the weekends, this would cost uh, in uh, uh, working hours, uh, not to say what uh, volunteers can bring in free of uh, charge and so on and so forth. And we have, uh, and uh, we have uh, presence at different events, uh, uh, speeches, seminars, uh, and we send uh, to each uh, ministry uh, all suggestions uh, that they come from ministries and policies, which we believe are extremely important, and we do the follow up. Uh, so other programs, uh, um, uh, for example, we have what we call the. Um, 
observer for the neighborhood. We have the civil defense. Civil defense is very important. Uh, in the last two years, uh, no volunteer uh, was used. I mean, and you're going to change this. And uh, volunteers could help also civil, um, uh, the civil defense and uh, blood donations. I mean, these are supported by and by uh, volunteers who want uh, uh, for, uh, to get uh, their support. And we've managed uh, via um, our office, uh, we've managed to have, um, and I do congratulate them, uh, uh, free of charge, uh, uh, physical education, gymnastics, or uh, for various events. So we, there is a lot of mobility from a number of uh, uh, organizations. And another um, uh, a new thing is the social economy, a very important uh, sector, social economy. That's all I wanted to say. I know that uh, we are running out of time. I would like to thank you for your participation. And uh, I'm ready to reply to your questions during the Q&A session. Savas is preparing uh, the intervention, the link up. There's a link up, I think. We have another uh, one from Bulgaria. Uh, so um, about the challenges faced by Berbov Yorgiev and Luben Banov. Yes. Yes, good morning. Kalisa Smaira. Uh, my name is Petko Georgiev. I'm the chairman of the board of ProInfo, the organization which is uh, hosting this project. And I want to thank our partners in Cyprus, the NGO Support Center, for organizing such an interesting debate in such an important time. Um, before going into the details and about before presenting you the picture how the crisis uh, affects civil society in Bulgaria, I just want to make one, one, one small point. Um, in many of the new member states, uh, especially those that are coming from the former communist part of Europe, civil society has, uh, has had a very important role in the past uh, 15, 20 years. Besides providing social services and preventing human rights, which it does everywhere around the world, Civil society here has always played a very active role in, uh, in democracy building, in development of democratic institutions. And uh, this is one of, the, one of the areas of civil society activism which have been very severely, unfortunately, affected by the crisis, by the lack of funding. So there is one more aspect, you know, the, the economic crisis and its impact on civil society has been a factor of the, slow, of the slowing down of democratic reforms in our part of the world. But I want to, uh, to present our Bulgarian speaker, Mr. Luben Panov. He's the program director of the Bulgarian Center for Nonprofit Law, who uh, can go into much more detail and uh, show you some data about the impact of the economic crisis on civil society in uh, Bulgaria, and hopefully we can learn from your experience, from the experience of the other participants in the project, and see how we can we can handle a, a situation which has been really um, quite difficult uh, for the development of civil society in our country. So, Luven, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Petro. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for, for me, it is a pleasure to join this debate, even though from a distance. Uh, I will tell you about uh, some of the challenges that uh, civil society organizations in Bulgaria face, uh, because I think uh, organizations in, in Cyprus and in the other countries around uh, Europe uh, have similar, similar problems. Uh, and I hope now you'll be able, we've prepared something like a, a short presentation and you'll be able to see it. Uh, I, I represent the Bulgarian Center for Not-for-Profit Law, which is an organization trying to support the, the development of an enabling framework for civil society organizations, both in terms of the legal framework, but, but also in terms of the financial framework in which civil society organizations work. Uh, I, I've listed here uh, some of the most important effects of the crisis on civil society organizations in Bulgaria. The first one relates to the cuts in public funds for civil society organizations and which is especially visible at the local level. Uh, local cities 
uh, or municipalities used to have some budget uh, for supporting civil society initiatives. Uh, many towns now do not have this because they were forced to cut their budget and the first thing they cut was exactly this part of their budget. Uh, a second fact, a uh, very important fact, uh, is that uh, the number of employed people in civil society organizations has, has decreased dramatically. Uh, so compared to 2010, in 2012, there were 17% less people employed, or about 17,000 people overall were employed uh, in the civil society sector. Uh, on the other hand, and at the same time, uh, the number of people that need support and need, uh, need CSOs to help them has increased dramatically. Uh, according to our uh, most recent statistics, there are 49% of the population is in risk of being poor or socially excluded. Uh, I mean, half of the population needs support and we have 17,000 employees that may try to do something about it. Uh, and last but not least, this economic crisis has become political. Uh, in, in February of 2013, people went to, uh, uh, to the streets to protest against high electricity prices. Uh, prices yes. Uh, now in June, uh, they went out to protest against the uh, untransparent decisions of the parliament and the government. Uh, they wanted more transparency in the way decisions are taken by, by, the, by the state institutions and by politicians. Uh, and there were several issues which then came to the surface. The first one was, how do you actually involve people? Uh, how do you make them uh, join the debate? Uh, people and civil society organizations. Uh, whom exactly you try to involve? How do you ensure that all possible views are represented and not just the ones that are in support of what you do? Uh, and and this, this crisis, which became political, uh, created lack of trust between uh, many civil society organizations and the government. And here I've, I've, uh, I wanted to show you several images uh, of the different types of, of protests and attempts of people and civil society to, to take part in the debate. This is the monument of the Soviet army, which is uh, built in the center of Sofia. Uh, and some people try to use art to show uh, their position about having such a monument in the center of Sofia. Uh, you could see uh, that these Soviet soldiers are now uh, painted as uh, the superheroes, Superman, Captain America and others. And, and the, sign says, uh, uh, the sign says in line with modern times. And the same monument again, this is uh, uh, last year the anniversary from the uh, from 1968 when the the soviet army marched in prague and crushed the the spring revolution there uh, the bulgarian army was part of the forces that entered the czech republic uh, and and this is uh, the apology of the bulgarians to the czech people uh, the 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 sign says Bulgaria apologizes in, in Czech. And this is another image from, from the protests uh, in June uh, when people uh, wanted more transparency in how decisions are made. And they wanted to, to know why some decisions are taken and who uh, proposes candidates for high government positions. Uh, if you're interested in, in what uh, uh, this, this guy is holding, the, the poster, uh, there were attempts of the government to, to try to, to say that the protests uh, are actually not real and there is someone uh, paying these people that go out on the streets. So the, the poster says, 
I'm not paid, I hate you for free. Uh, and now uh, back, back to the civil society organizations. <clears throat> uh, I, I heard also the previous presenters mention that uh, uh, people expect that uh, the, the main effects or the main purpose of uh, uh, non-governmental organizations is uh, their role as charitable organizations. So their role in providing support to the poor and the needy. Uh, on the other hand, in Bulgaria, a, a recent survey we, we had showed that the poorest and most needy know the least about what civil society organizations are doing. Uh, moreover, only 21% of people trust CSOs and their fundraising campaigns. But interestingly, there are two positive trends uh, amidst the crisis. The first one is that the state the state uh, increases the funds it, it transfers to civil society organizations for providing social services and corporations increase the support they provide to civil society organizations. Uh, what's next? Uh, I've listed some ideas. Uh, what should we be doing more? The first thing is uh, uh, CSOs are partners to the government in solving problems. And this should be clear to both civil society organizations and, and to the government. Uh, and they, 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 that's obvious. And there are two ways, two main ways in which this partnership happens. First of all, there is a need for real participation in, this, in the decision making process. CSOs can, can bring uh, a lot of positive effects on, on how decisions are taken and on the types of decisions taken. And, and secondly, also very important, civil society organizations are a partner to the government in helping the, the people that need help, in providing social, educational, healthcare services to the people. Uh, Oh, the other the other important issue is that CSOs need to involve more people in their work. Uh, I think this is very valid for Bulgaria, but I believe it is valid for mo most of the other countries in our region. Uh, CSOs need to involve more people as volunteers, as donors, supporters, beneficiaries, and they need to work more with the media to show what they do so that uh, the general public knows what civil society organizations are doing. Uh, civil society organizations need to try and find new ways to raise funds. Uh, they need to turn to corporate and individual donors. They need to engage in social entrepreneurship, start mission-related business activities, because the, this, uh, especially social entrepreneurship, is one of the main sources of income of civil society organizations worldwide and, and for all of this civil society organizations need a supportive legal environment uh, they need an environment where uh, they are allowed to take part in the decision making process they are allowed to engage in uh, profit making activities and fundraising and before i conclude this i, I found this uh, proverb chinese proverb which for me, illustrates very importantly why civil society are important and need to be engaged. Uh, tell me and I will forget. Show me and I will remember. Involve me and I will understand. And I think this best describes what civil participation should mean. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, I, I would be glad to answer those. Thank you very much, uh, Duben and Petko. Uh, we don't have time for questions now. We, you can uh, send us a, perhaps an email to for people to send questions. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, we can we have to move to the next uh, part now, the conference. And uh, I, I'd like to take this opportunity to apologize to uh, participants for mispronouncing their names sometimes. I'm sure I did it.
Thank you very much. Is there any question specifically you want uh, to ask now? Or? Okay, so we'll move on to the next speaker. Yeah. We go directly on to Ioana Dimosenus, who is the representative of the NGO Initiative Project Steering Group. Good afternoon. I'm Ioana Dimosenus. I represent the um, NGO Initiative Project Group. I uh, hope that my cold will not uh, uh, interrupt us too often. So we're going to talk here today about the legislative framework of NGOs in Cyprus and what are the challenges they face today. First of all, I'll tell you who we are. We are an informal group of nine NGOs, which was established informally in 2007 by nine NGOs, which all had the same concerns about the legislative framework, which in 2007 had begun to be amended. The process had begun. Today, active members of the initiative are index uh, uh, Terra Cypria for the Environment, uh, the Family Planning Organization, the Bird Life uh, Cyprus, a Skill Development Center, NGO Support Center, and Peace Player Cyprus. But these, uh, p the positions and views of our team are supported by other NGOs as well. Now, what is our aim? Our aim is to participate, first of all, in the amendment of the legislative framework which began in 2007 in order to create a modern legislative framework in Cyprus which would be harmonized with the requirements of the times and international and European standards through our participation in the revision and amendment process. We consider that uh, modernization in Cyprus is essential for the law and the creation of a framework will facilitate the uh, contribution of NGOs to Cyprus uh, affairs. Let's go on to what's happening now as far as the legislative framework is concerned. NGOs are registered either as non-profit making companies based on the, corp, uh, the, ca the company's law, CAP 133, or as associations or foundations based on the law governing the establishment, operation, and dissolution of associations and foundations. This law is the law of 1972, which was amended in 1997. And as we can understand from the dates, there's already a problem. I mean, they're not uh, modern enough they don't respond to today. So in 2007, an amendment course began for the legislative frameworks, which is now at its final stage. And we have an amendment of the law to do with associations of foundations. Uh, it's called laws unifying and abolishing con um, and, uh, cu current um, legislation. But we also have the elaboration of a new uh, draft bill about a regime of private organization of public uh, utility, which is being elaborated by the Ministry of Finance, and uh, it's called the Private Organization of Public Utility Certification Laws. At this point, this bill, uh, which is being processed by the Ministry of the Interior, is uh, with the legal service for control. The Ministry of Finance will send it at the end of January, beginning of February, to the law service. Now, as regards uh, the bill, which is something new in Cyprus law, the on uh, private organization of public utility certification law, I will call it uh, IOCO for short. So this, any, any uh, legal person can apply if they've got their registration in the uh, republic, if they want to act. If they have one or more activities, they can apply. They can be certified by the Minister of Finance as a private uh, 
public utility organization. From 2007, the NGO initiative uh, had various comments to make on this. We would like uh, to present some of our concerns about this law, about the first act, that one about uh, associations and foundations. Here we see that uh, clubs and association uh, clubs become part of this law, and they didn't exist before. But they had a separate law, and we observe here and wonder as an initiative group and think that there isn't enough distinction between clubs and associations. The um, confuses the personal liability of the members of the association or foundation with the liability of the um, legal person itself, which is a problem for us. The conditions for registration we consider are too strict, and there's an excessive intervention of the attorney general in the internal affairs of the organizations, in addition to the uh, part, uh, well, over and above the necessary measure to secure their their, um, operations. Now, as to our concerns about the bill on the these uh, associations, uh, public utility, there's too much uh, um, discretion for rejecting the applications if the criteria are not specified enough. We worry because uh, when uh, an IOGO applies for certification, they need to analyze the objectives of this uh, uh, person, which can be open to interpretation and therefore can easily be uh, rejected. Uh, the movable and Movable properties are important factors in order to see whether they will be certified or not, and this is a problem. A possibility is given to the minister to co-assess the previous activities of an organization in order to give them a certificate and not just previous uh, violations of the law. Uh, the law gives the minister the power to ask uh, the amendments on the um, uh, on the articles of association and uh, of memorandum association. The minister has a lot of discretion to amend or remove the capacity of a public utility organization without uh, restrictions. Some of the criteria create uncertainty as to who can be certified. Some of the um, conditions for revoking certification are general and unclear. The bill. The accounts of uh, IOGO must be uh, audited by an auditor, regardless of turnover. Uh, co an auditing committee for um, uh, income of uh, over 50,000 is too low, and the provisions for the abolition of IOGO create risks of abuse of power. But what it concerns us more that oil economic activities are forbidden by IOGO, even when this has not aim, the aim of profit, but the fulfillment of the activities of the organization. This means that an NGO that wants to be registered as IOGO because it wants to have some, let's say, privileges as to do with uh, the donor being uh, exempt uh, f in, uh, for the organization to be able to survive, it won't be able to have any economic activity. And this means, in essence, that uh, it won't be able to secure uh, its living. And this is something that uh, concerns us greatly. And we want to talk about this with you as well. We want you to know this. So our comments have been sent to during 2009-2011, and uh, the, our more recent comments have also been sent to the, volunteer, uh, the Commissioner for Volunteerism and to the ministries uh, to do with the specific acts and bills. Now, our organization, our group, cooperates with, it has three basic uh, cooperations in its effort to achieve amendments of the legislative framework in uh, based on the European standards. We work with the European Centre Not-for-Profit Law. This is an organization which is based in Hungary, in Budapest, and which works specifically on the legislative framework of NGOs in Europe. Uh, we have sent them our bills and our comments, and they've sent us their comments and interventions as to how they think this um, framework should come to Cyprus in order to be in line with European and international standards. They've already expressed their concerns about the compliance of these bills with international and European standards. Also, we work with the Council of Europe, which uh, has sent uh, all its uh, legislative frameworks of the countries making uh, part of the Council of Europe and how the U Cyprus legislative framework should work in order to be in line. And we also have the support of UNDP Act together with USAID. 
Now, as to do with our next steps, we'd like to invite all NGOs to a public uh, consultation this Thursday at 5 p.m. At, uh, at the Paraplegic Center. It's near the School for the Blind. And we'd like to invite all NGOs because we want to present to you the problems of these bills, and we'd like all together to contribute and discuss what is the course that these bills should take. So we invite you there. We've brought invitations to give you uh, personally. And we're going to talk about the amendment of the law concerning NGOs in Cyprus and uh, the realities and problems, so you're all invited. Now, as to do with our next steps, so we're organizing a public consultation with the participation of um, uh, others uh, and uh, for others who work in issues of NGO in order to in, in, uh, update them. We're uh, arranging meetings with members of the House in order to inform people in order to publish our complete positions both as an initiative group and as the European Center for Non-for-Profit Law. Those who need it can be sent to you by email, but just approach us and we'll, um, if our website is open to cooperation with other NGOs because we want to create a European uh, legislative framework here. We consider that we have an ally here and someone who can help us and have our views heard as regards the government. And we'd like at this point to say that it would be very happy if the representation of the Commission and the Parliament could stand by us and support us. So we'd be very happy about that. I'd like to thank you for your attention. We are open to any discussion, and I remind you that we wait, we'll wait for you on Thursday. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Limosenos. We're open for questions. We have some time. I imagine that you would like to um, have asked some questions. No, Harris has already asked a question. Let's have somebody who hasn't spoken yet. Good morning. Good afternoon. I have two questions, one to Mr. Yannagis and one to Ioanna. I've, I've grown up in the center of Nicosia, but I have cousins who live in a village, a small village, in Larnaca, in the Larnaca district. And I've found from the activities of my cousins that the youth uh, board in their village has got a lot of activities, and all the young people in the village participate very enthusiastically. And I want to ask whether there is a difference in the volunteerism in urban centers in the villages, or if this is just my perception because the villages are smaller groups which you can easily observe their activities. And to Joanna, it's very interesting and pleasant that there is this, uh, we have this bill at the moment uh, being promoted. But as a lawyer myself, I wanted to know on what legal basis is uh, the Minister of Finance uh, in charge of this um, bill? Because uh, in my view, the Ministry of Education and Culture should really be involved more, and whether with their um, competencies, if that ministry is involved in the creation of this law. That's really what I wanted to say. Um, microphone, please. I've got two questions as well. It came up in several of the speeches about the support needed for NGOs. It was mentioned from the Bulgarian team. I think Alexandra mentioned it as well. Um, and you talked about a legislative framework. Now, it does seem to me that at the moment what we've got is you talked about sustainability and viability. If you're going to have NGOs 
needing to sustain themselves, they have to do commercial activities. Otherwise, they're going to rely on the state, which hasn't got any money. So that, to me, is one of the most important things that needs to be dealt with promptly so that the NGOs can continue the very valuable work you all agree that they're doing. Um, and then, Yanagi said, Yanni, you said that we need to see the way we manage volunteers. And that's something I get a bee in my bonnet about because I think, first of all, we need a change of mindset here. And that is that children from a school age need this in the curriculum. They need to see how good they feel after they have contributed something to their community or their environment. And NGOs also have a responsibility. Cancer for Kids has got several volunteers who've been coming to us for years, and several of them doing these Duke of Edinburgh award schemes have come with a third NGO they've been to because they've spent time with others and said, but they, we just went there and they didn't give us anything to do. So those NGOs are actually doing a disservice. It's totally counterproductive to ask somebody to volunteer and then not use their services. At Cans for Kids, they get dirty. We work them very hard, and they go home feeling satisfied and that they've contributed. And I think that we need to, all of us who are looking for volunteers, think about what they take home with them after they've been helping us. That's it. Uh, another question from Louisa before going on. No, okay. No? No, I'd just like to make a comment that the term NGO is used and CSO alternatively without there being any. Uh, without saying the difference, what the difference is. But we must also understand that there is a difference, and in the acts of law and bills of law, we should be clear on this. And I'd like to say the big difference between an NGO and a TSO, an NGO is also the Employers Association. It's also union. It's also uh, hunters. So we should um, distinguish those organizations which work for their members from the organizations which work for the good of society as a whole. We are involved in these, the CSOs, the civil society organizations. So I know very well that we, Cyprus is represented in organizations in Europe by them, by the unions and by the employers. And we have to look at these issues as well, uh, Commissioner, in our representation in Europe. Thank you. Yes, I agree completely with the gentleman. Uh, for, uh, you don't remember me, but in 2007, we invited, I worked at Nicosia University at that time, and we had a huge crisis because I think there was a huge crisis at that time about the role of non-government organizations or CSOs, CSOs or NGOs. and the, they were being accused, civil society was being accused of many things, and we considered it right to invite all organizations that we knew as a university to see how we can get organized, because we understood that the legislative framework was entirely inadequate to cover um, contemporary needs. I must say that at the first meeting, we were sent a representative, Mr. Commissioner, from the the organization which basically was organized by the state, the umbrella uh, organization of NGOs, their representative, who more or less threatened us and said we weren't entitled to have that meeting in order to say that uh, civil society is not only, and I insist on this, it's not just organizations that deal with charity, that soci civil society is an enormous issue. I assure you that we were threatened and attacked at that first meeting. But it seems that you've gone forward, and I'm very, very happy that you've continued, because after that, I wasn't so involved with the issue. But I saw the expert who had come from Hungary. I had uh, taken part. I was invited as an individual, because I was involved in a lot of organizations in civil society, to speak to them. And precisely, our large problem here in Cyprus is, for example, the Association of Hunters is considered civil society, but it's not. 
It has things which are not, for example, to the benefit of society as a whole. We have to distinguish the various between the various uh, categories, and we have to have different legislative provisions for all this. You can't have all categories the same. You can't have a football club like Omonia or Apoel to be considered to be uh, civil society organizations. But sports uh, clubs are different things. Uh, charities are different. So this is the first thing we must do so that uh, organizations, CSOs, should know what they're doing. Because NG- NGO could be a party political organization. I prefer the term CSO. So it doesn't, it doesn't mean that a party should not exist, but it's something different. What is meant by the European Union is different. It's not, it doesn't mean what uh, is the same thing under the control of the government, etc. Civil society organizations are something over and above, and that's why we have to protect ourselves. And a legal framework, perhaps, is what will help bring the impetus for this to change. There is no... There is no such thing in Europe. They've had people come from Europe here, and we've asked them, what is an NGO? Ah, well, we don't actually have a definition. So we've got to, I mean, if we could start pan-European, I don't know. But it just, there isn't that separation. The, yeah, what Alexandra has brought up is very, very important. Uh, many times, the commissioner himself, in voluntary organizations, the voluntary movement, civil society also consists of organizations which are not all voluntary. And uh, because the public, the people that don't belong to civil society, even people who are volunteers, have to be informed and it must be clear in the minds of citizens if not to say uh, uh, politicians so that when they talk about uh, policies or when they have meetings with the NGOs they haven't got in mind that uh, they come from uh, uh, voluntary organizations or charitable organizations. Thank you. I agree with the views of Ms. Paminonda. Indeed, there must be information because there's a lot of confusion between the voluntary movement and NGOs, and this is, um, creates problems for the NGOs because we don't know how to move forward sometimes. And I will agree very much with the lady. Uh, indeed, we consider that uh, commercial activities which do not aim at uh, profit are very, very important. Uh, So therefore, especially for the IOGO Act, they should renegotiate and look at the uh, uh, framework if we want uh, NGOs in Cyprus to go forward and represent civil society. Now, as to do with the question from Nandia Gognodi, well, the legal uh, framework has as its basis uh, the Ministry of Finance. Only the Minister of Finance is able to uh, certify because there are certain economic and financial criteria. So it's considered that the basis is the Ministry of Finance, but it is considered that perhaps the Ministry of Finance should have some involvement. Thank you. As to do you, with, as to your question, yes, small local societies have a more uh, active activity in cultural issues and so on. Whereas in large cities, there's almost no interest in these issues, and this is due to the fact that small societies 
uh, uh, feel more isolated, and uh, a close society creates a kind of dynamic, uh, whereas in a larger society, these things are dispersed more. And that is why we speak about cu cultivation, this issue of cultivation that has to begin through um, uh, education. And that's why it's very, very important. And uh, we speak about school units. Uh, and it's not an accident that we speak about school units. School units will help children that are in each unit to cultivate uh, uh, essentially and substantively and not just superficially. Now, as to the issue of the law. Unfortunately, or fortunately, our constitution gives excessive powers to ministers. This, for me, is um, rather anachronistic, but this is what we've got at the moment. Based on the constitution, if you notice, you can't do anything unless it goes to the Council of Ministers. Even a declaration has to go to the Council of Ministers. The President of the Republic said, yes, go on, but it has to go to the uh, Council of Ministers. That's what it says in the Constitution. So it gives superpowers to the President and to the Ministers. And it sounds dictatorial, but that's the truth of the Constitution. There's nothing we can do about that. So the Minister of Finance, because financial issues have to be dealt by, by the, uh, the Ministry of Finance. And because these are financial issues, even if they, if they concern NGOs or CSOs, so this is the competency of the ministry. And so there is no ministry which sets, which under the Constitution is responsible for volunteerism, no ministry. It's, this is something that was created eight months ago. So many of the problems that are created are precisely because the fact that every ministry has its own sector, social welfare. We talk about environmentalism. We talk about even about spe specialized policies which NGOs or CSOs deal with, which can't have a, effect. And so we're trying to coordinate things better because everything is too fragmented. That's why we want a, a holistic policy framework, and which includes the laws, uh, because there's a contradiction in the, reg the law and registration and incorporation of associations, clubs, and uh, NGOs say that the commercial activities are allowed. That's what that law says. But the other law says that they're not allowed commercial activities. So we try. We managed to convince the ministry about this. The new law talks about staff as well, whereas the OCO law says that you can't. So it's a matter of political decision as well. The president of the Republic on the OCO gave me instructions to speak to the Ministry of Finance because it's a matter of political decision, not technocrats. But pressure from you, of course, will help. Now, as to the issue of the NGOs and CSOs, what does the declaration say? It says that they are non-profit organizations which independently and self-governed are active in public life and their activity must contribute to the common good. Common good, not the good of the group or the team. Therefore, Apoel, for example, or another football team, any football team, or club, it's not for the common good, it's for their members. It's not for the common good. They might be registered, they might say what they like, but they're not working for the common good. It's the common good of society, that means, not for the team. The declaration makes it clear, for me anyway, now as a commissioner, what you have to be and what activities you must have. Uh, what does common good mean? Is it recycling, for example? Yes to the contribution against racial discrimination. So uh, defense of democracy, for example, the common good. This is clear for me. It's not an accident that this is the declaration that uh, we uh, passed. But a very important part on issues of policy, politics, for example, the voluntary movement and uh, CSOs, NGOs, yes, they have to impact on policy, on 
they specialize in specific issues that they have knowledge about. We're talking about legislation. They specialize knowledge in this organization, and very, very rightly so. That's why we want NGOs and CSOs to play this role as well, to impact on policies, because at the end of the day, uh, politicians uh, don't know everything, so they need the contribution of citizens. We want the views and uh, of citizens, and citizens often know more than we do, and they have much more specialized and correct and more independent knowledge. Therefore, all the things that we're talking about contribute uh, significantly to modernizing the laws, the regulations, but also modernization of our mentality, because if we don't change our mindset, we are never going to go forward. I think I've uh, covered the questions. So we begin. So it's your turn. So, uh, because this is my second question, I would like to um, uh, pressurize a bit more, Mr. Yanagis, if you please allow me. It depends, it depends. Oh, we'll see. Uh, so, my question is uh, how, I mean, uh, I think it's the same spirit, uh, a collection of your last uh, uh, last reply. Um, I mean, as to whether the government, uh, the state, I'm not referring, uh, don't uh, take it that, um, I'm against, or I'm talking about against the police or the. But anyhow, uh, whether you can convince us, uh, um, uh, whether you can convince us if the state wishes to give space uh, to uh, the NGOs. The reason why I'm asking this question is that uh, uh, because indeed um, the um, thing is that uh, in your presentation uh, as against uh, uh, Mrs. Atalidu because she said uh, that it's not only uh, NGOs or uh, um, uh, the organizations and so on and so forth. So uh, your uh, presentation, uh, in fact, uh, focused on NGOs, it was very intense. I mean, very, you stressed this point uh, too much. And uh, based on my experience, um, and the same politia, uh, uh, the, uh, the state, I mean, the same organization like Mr. Baristianis uh, and uh, the commissioner uh, about uh, access to information. In fact, uh, the uh, uh, Obudsman uh, s submitted a complaint to the Minister of Justice that uh, he didn't invite uh, the organizations, although we had uh, given a ready, uh, let's say, a bill of law, which was adopted by the House. So they ignored both the government, so the, the, the parliament and us as an NGO. They've ignored us. And uh, the same also happens uh, um, in the law about uh, political parties, there is uh, some difficulty on behalf of the government, and um, uh, they, are, they do not have any actions, let's say. And um, uh, the uh, state um, uh, has uh, this gap about uh, the registration, as you said. I don't know if they're waiting for the new law. I do not know. So there is still this um, uh, problem because you're still waiting to be registered as an NGO. Uh, so, uh, of course, you are not uh, in charge. Uh, the behavior of uh, the uh, parliamentarians. Uh, um, and I think that uh, there was uh, quite a, uh, uh, an, uh, terrible I mean, behavior on behalf of, uh, uh, of uh, the MPs. Uh, um, because uh, uh, they would, uh, from where do you get your money? Um, so I wanted to uh, put this, all this to you, and uh, uh, can you convince us uh, that how the legislation changed and whether you really want to give space to the civil society, uh, something which belongs, uh, we have to, so we have to take note of the questions, I think, because uh, only 15 minutes before we close. Another one. Another one. Two, three. And the lady here, sitting in the back. And um, I agree. We 
We just uh, said that uh, as NGOs, we concentrated uh, on volunteerism, but we see that there is uh, such a need, there is a need for the participation of citizens and more involvement in uh, uh, what is happening within our society. So we have to give this voice to the uh, citizens. You have to form them in order to um, uh, be um, not not to be ap apathic, I mean passive as they are uh, today. Uh, so as Mr. Ganagi said, it's very important to educate uh, children, young children from school age, and it's uh, the, me the the measures you've said you've mentioned are very important. And uh, however, we also have to inform the people. Uh, to so that they know what it means uh, an NGO and um, it is important also for all to know and uh, the mass media should focus on that and should put the emphasis on that so that people know what this is because we are going to start from there if we are well informed uh, we can uh, become more active citizens and uh, we can be uh, more involved and this is uh, I think the problem begins from this point I think that you are not uh, sufficiently formed I'm talking about simple people about the citizens uh, not about organized bodies or organized associations Luisa Hachivasiliu from uh, the uh, NGO Support Center. Again, again, a question uh, for uh, addressed to you, the commissioner, because uh, I've been trying. I was looking for you for a long time, so it's a two-aspect question because you've mentioned uh, public consultations. I not. I don't know whether uh, this comes from you, but I would like to uh, make a remark. Uh, a ministry and the public consultation took place the third of December. It was Tuesday, so I received the invitation very late. Uh, because we know from somebody, so we said, why did I wait until uh, you finished? Uh, it's good that you received it in the afternoon of the previous day. So I don't know where it's up to you. I mean, uh, you can do something, but if it, you just uh, do it um, uh, for the sake of doing it, um, so maybe this does not apply to uh, many uh, NGOs, but uh, we could uh, be um, uh, present. So this is something which has to do with consultation, something because you refer to the uh, uh, co uh, cooperation, collaboration between uh, NGOs and uh, uh, we are um, uh, 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 working and trying to um, 95 percent. It's a it's a budget, European budget. If I'm not wrong, this five percent, uh, the state can contribute uh, if it is the state uh, and so on, uh, which participates. Uh, um, so I want to ask you, uh, how do you uh, further enforce the cooperation between NGOs and uh, the municipalities? And since the state gives the 5% or the 2 or 3% out of this 5% to local government uh, for co-funding, co-financing, uh, couldn't the state give to NGOs uh, um, which have the the, 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 the the objective, I mean, to register their uh, suggestions, their proposals, because you do have problem of financing. And the last one, maybe you said so and I've, I didn't uh, uh, see it. Uh, but uh, volunteerism, if you have something to do with volunteerism abroad and uh, volunteerism from Cyprus towards developing countries. Uh, last question in the back. And then the replies. We have to give some time for replies, please. So uh, for one question uh, from the uh, lady here, because I represent uh, the local government. And um, it is uh, indeed a reality true that uh, many NGOs, uh, associations, uh, they uh, asked, I mean, the local government and the municipalities because they cannot even uh, submit applications for co-funding if there is no partnership with the local uh, uh, government and so on and so forth. So, however, we have a difficulty uh, because um, there aren't uh, any, um, any uh, possibilities uh, uh, because, as you know, uh, there is a lot of um, uh, cuts uh, uh, also. Uh, but uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, there was uh, such a, a proposal in order for the social policy uh, to be followed by the municipalities uh, and in order to have an official cooperation with these uh, NGOs uh, and associations. So I do not know uh, 
um, uh, what is uh, the situation now. And uh, the, uh, I think that the municipalities are closer to the citizens uh, rather than the non-personal state. I'm talking about uh, the NGOs, and uh, I, I mean, I'm very happy to hear that you're going to set up the home for the volunteers because, indeed, many organizations, they do not have a place where to accommodate themselves, and it is one of the requests that we had and we sent, we used to send to the local government. Unfortunately, we cannot uh, uh, fulfill this objective because we do not have any spaces because, I mean, if you give um, some room to one organization, why not give to another one? So this was a criterion. So I think that it is a very important uh, development. So indeed, this would contribute uh, to uh, the development of uh, this movement, because if the citizen does not know where to address themselves, uh, half of uh, the job uh, is gone. And one other example, you talk about the neighborhood observer. In our municipality, the municipality of Nicosia, we tried to implement this uh, the last six months. Uh, we've uh, had uh, some presentations and we've sent invitations via clubs and so on and so forth. And um, we haven't had any reaction. But in the last two months, because we put boxes on collecting uh, in pharmacies, in the pharmacies of our municipalities, we uh, we have these boxes and we've registered with uh, 300 volunteers. So this demonstrates that um, uh, if um, uh, we have something uh, where the uh, we can have... Um, uh, a direct uh, uh, thing uh, we can um, uh, work it uh, more uh, we have can have more uh, better results thank you Uh, so if there is cuts, and I'm saying that uh, I'm going to register in order, um, I, I don't think that they can say no. And the second one, I think that it should be closer to the citizens uh, because you have to reply to the questions, first of all. And... Uh, I want to co uh, comment what you said before. So the, the position of the state and the government, uh, it's not only NGOs. Uh, we want a, a, a modern volunteerism. And we want to uh, implement this policy on uh, uh, modern volunteerism. You said something about NGOs and uh, the uh, movement of volunteers. There is a general uh, communication and information problem, as you said, on all issues, not only about uh, the movement of volunteers or NGOs in Cyprus. We do have this problem of uh, informing people. And it is a very uh, severe weakness and shortcoming that we've pinpointed. It is, um, uh, but we were looking for this organization. Um, um, uh, we asked, so didn't understand. Uh, uh, but uh, maybe it's not like this, but uh, we have uh, to uh, put this question, uh, this information. Um, ah, but you're doing with uh, volunteers. But what are these NGOs? Uh, uh, what you said about uh, what I mean, the reaction of uh, the MPs. Uh, ah, you know, yes, uh, they are trying to get money and so on and so forth. Yes, I mean, there are these things. Uh, um, and it's, uh, I know that uh, they do say this. So, um, because we want uh, all citizens uh, uh, know, because they have nothing to be afraid of, uh, uh, to uh, be checked, and so on and so forth. Uh, so at the end of the day, uh, I can say with certainty that the only uh, thing that you have the, the uh, reliable, it's you. I mean, you. Uh, this is a this is a truth, uh, because uh, you're um, uh, giving uh, out of your person uh, personal time, and uh, you contribute a lot to uh, the state. Uh, and um, uh, our behavior, attitudes, uh, uh, we do have severe problems of attitudes. That's why I'm saying that you have to to cultivate our our young uh, people because. Uh, uh, these are, are um, they have more uh, knowledge uh, and they are more professionals. The NGOs they are very professionals. Uh, they can intervene. Uh, 
uh, where the state uh, cannot intervene because the state does not have the knowledge and the expertise, whereas uh, NGOs, uh, um, they are dealing with uh, specific issues. And uh, uh, this is a difference for me. And of course, the volunteer organizations, uh, NGOs, uh, uh, they do need this uh, support in order to do their uh, job correctly. This is not bad. Uh, I mean, it's not bad if they have salaried staff. I mean, they do well. I mean, if, if they have salaried staff, because if we want to be professionals, if, and, and if we want volunteerism to be uh, on a more uh, professional basis, uh, why not? I mean, if uh, we can afford so about per, per consultation, if you're talking about consultations, uh, 4th of December that I mentioned before, yes, it was upon the proposal of my office, and we called this uh, the 4th of uh, December the officers appointed uh, they were invited and they received training on how they should uh, be prepared and uh, we did this training at uh, the Academy of uh, um, uh, Public Administration it's uh, very wrong I mean uh, they informed you uh, the day before and uh, you should send me the complaint officially to me because they had time to prepare this and to send out the invitations about uh, the when do you have to register. Yes, uh, there is a problem generally uh, because I received a, a complaint about 14 months to wait. They, they waited for 14 months. So uh, following, I mean, in Persians with a new law, this is going to be uh, quicker off the microphone. Something has been said off the microphone. And I told them already, if you cannot implement the new law, so please, you have to uh, to do it. I mean, uh, uh, yes, but um, this law gives them the uh, discretion to do so. I will tell you something. Whatever the law uh, says, uh, some, some things cannot be justified. I mean, you do not uh, uh, need 10 years to approve a law or to enact a law, local government now. Indeed, because we believe that the role of the local government is extremely important. We do believe uh, decentralization in order to be more effective, uh, to be closer to the citizen despite the, the weaknesses, because yes, we do have weaknesses. But however, the local government should undertake its responsibilities. And these responsibilities, uh, they do include also cooperation with NGOs. And that is why I suggested to the Union of Municipalities, and I sent it in writing, and it is going to be approved very soon to set up these partnerships, these um, uh, a cooperation. I mean, uh, uh, we would uh, ask uh, uh, the, N uh, the NGOs and uh, uh, um, to, to invite uh, us to meetings, uh, and uh, they should uh, um, do it. I mean, as you said, if we had this institutionalized, um, uh, the uh, local government couldn't deviate. I mean, um, and they uh, maybe. Uh, I mean, the, the mayor. They are maybe not aware at all. And this happens, I mean, uh, or maybe they didn't understand something and so on and so forth. So when you are going to institutionalize this, the information will reach the people that it should reach. Now, financing, funding. Uh, I do not uh, think that um, there is anybody uh, who does not want to make use of uh, European funds. We have to underline their importance, and the, and the President of the Republic plays great attention to that. And of course, we want this. Uh, to be promoted. If I have a problem, please send a letter to my office if you have any problems with that. <laughs> yes, we have Twitter as well. We have Twitter. Um, we have the AVS. AVS, uh, maybe you know that program. Uh, you can uh, provide or give uh, uh, from one to, uh, to, to, to 12 months. Uh, and in other countries, in other countries too. So I encourage you to do so. It's um, a very good experience, and uh, you can acquire many skills and even language. You can learn a language, so it's very important. Social policy, yes. So this is not going to be managed centrally by the ministry. So this is going to. Uh, be given to the municipalities, the local government. This is a request on behalf of uh, Troika and um, also the recent approaches we want to have because it's uh, more, more effective uh, rather than from the center to coordinate uh, all these activities and, and actions. Uh, and I do believe that this will help a lot. Uh, you will help NGOs um, uh, to uh, have these problems and also this could help for other issues as well. 
And uh, I would like to take that uh, I had a meeting last year with the Attorney General. Uh, of course, uh, he's, uh, um, he has a lot of work, of course, but he, however, uh, gave me half an hour uh, to deal with the problem of laws. I mean, this registration which is there um, about clubs, I don't know, associations and so on, or um, um, we will wait then for the suggestions uh, towards uh, the um, Attorney General Office. And uh, there are issues uh, which are uh, concerned protection and the welfare of the animals and uh, the local government. Uh, uh, because, uh, I mean, the, the, the licenses you have about dogs, I mean, should come uh, comes from the local government. Uh, so we are uh, doing this on different levels and uh, uh, laws for the protection and welfare of dogs. Uh, and uh, this creates a very uh, severe, severe problems for the implementation of the law. And I suggest that uh, for one minister to take the responsibility for the implementation of this law. We have a long way to go. You don't think that you can solve all problems uh, from one day to the other, but uh, we are doing well. Uh, things are being changed. Uh, and um, uh, there is uh, the will uh, to modernize these things and uh, uh, to implement uh, policies. Uh, uh, despite, you know, the actions that we have, uh, and uh, but because there is the political will, we are going to implement uh, it. Uh, so what you have to continue to do is uh, to uh, fight for what you, for your beliefs, and uh, uh, it's very important. Uh, um, it's a reality today. Uh, because uh, um, you have more, uh, more strong. Uh, you are more stronger than others, let's say, and uh, you can help a lot. So this is extremely important as well. You can play your role. How do you affect uh, people? And how you can attract other people, other citizens. I can uh, accept another two questions. So uh, these are going to be the last uh, questions with one that you have from Facebook. Uh, first of all, I would like to apologize uh, for my voice. Uh, I'm sick, but uh, I wanted to tell you, uh, and I would like to ask Mrs. Atalidu, because we are uh, approaching the European elections, that uh, the absence of NGOs, um, uh, the absence of NGOs uh, from the European Union, this question, I, I was listening at the same time. Anyway, uh, the, um, uh, the absence of, uh, I don't know, the terminology or whatever directives uh, on NGOs, uh, uh, at the European level, it's one of the problems that we face vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis, uh, European platforms we participate in. I mean, the guidelines that we have to date, they come from the Council of Europe. And because uh, this uh, seminar, this discussion rather, or this uh, seminar will uh, end up with a policy document which will also uh, be uh, sent to the future uh, European MPs and the existing, I mean, uh, European MPs, uh, it is a top which uh, could, uh, let's say, at a European level, could uh, be discussed. I mean, maybe not a, a law or legislation, but uh, uh, maybe uh, some time of a recommendation uh, for uh, the um, uh, countries and in order to support the civil society. Um, uh, for the civil society and NGOs, I, uh, uh, I would like to say that we use more the term civil um, society organizations uh, rather than NGOs. For this reason, I'm not going to be repeated. Uh, I would like to give uh, the floor to somebody else. Um, I think that um, it's important. My question. Uh, has to do the fact of uh, social entrepreneurship. Uh, recently, there was uh, a statement made in order to reinforce um, uh, social entrepreneurship, and uh, I would like to have more details about that and how is this uh, uh, involved uh, with uh, the NGOs in Cyprus? Uh, and uh, are you talking about social economy or uh, the? Um, are you talking? Microphone, please. Uh, social economy um, uh, has to do any uh, uh, non-profitable organizations and uh, um, uh, which have uh, no shareholders. Uh, they have um, employees. 
and uh, if I am a company, let's say, and uh, uh, I'm, uh, they are not going to deal with this, I mean, social businesses, NGOs or whatever you want to na to call it, uh, they do not have as their main objective profits. Uh, they aim at uh, providing uh, the social uh, benefit. So uh, if they have profits, okay, this is uh, very um, uh, much uh, used in uh, Portugal and Spain. So NGOs could do it, but also businesses to become active in a sector from where they can have also profits. And um, uh, we said uh, that uh, the law for the registration, it has this, uh, but um, I, I believe that uh, uh, how can we help uh, to fight uh, unemployment uh, as in the USA, the uh, free shops, I think. Uh, uh, and I believe that it is a new uh, sector indeed because uh, they cannot uh, become active, uh, I mean, these companies. So there is a gap there. So this gap financially can be covered by these uh, um, authorities and agencies that you've mentioned. And this uh, could also be part uh, of, uh, uh, I mean, youth uh, entrepreneurship or uh, uh, entrepreneurship uh, for young people. So we have a lot of funding from the EU for this. Please, you have to use the microphone for the interpreters. We cannot interpret from the English uh, speakers. Uh, so uh, reply, you are talking more generally. Um, social entrepreneurship can be uh, further reinforced through these uh, programs I've mentioned. There aren't anything specialized, no, not specialized. Uh, but um, there is room to be uh, active. Something else, Nadia. What I can tell you is as follows. In the Lisbon Treaty, yes, there is this thing. Um, uh, and uh, for, uh, we did uh, two uh, consultations uh, because we had uh, um, the, um, um, the honor, I mean, for the citizens here. I mean, uh, the representative was Antigone Papadopoulou from Cyprus. Um, and uh, and maybe um, that we need uh, a regulation or a directive, maybe I don't know. Um, because for the last 30 years, uh, because, uh, you know, we are very tired by examining, you know, proposals and so forth. So, yes, I will. I would convey this to Mrs. Papadopoulou and to others. They should... Uh, um, uh, because uh, something else I would like to act, uh, um, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm talking about, based on my own personal experience, uh, uh, there has been, and I hope now that Mr. Yannag is uh, it's very encouraging what you're saying, um, uh, to get away from these suspicions. I mean, the way they, they, um, they tackle or they face these uh, NGOs, because the majority of technocrats uh, um, they think that uh, uh, these organizations, they do create problems. They don't want them. Um, uh, it's an alarm uh, which can protect also the state um, uh, and the ministries uh, to take uh, wrong decisions. Um, um, And uh, so we have uh, to, uh, we have not only to have this uh, uh, week, uh, in public consultation week, but you should do it all, all, the year, all year round. For example, in the UK, when somebody in your neighbor wants to do something with uh, their houses outside, the outside on the facade, they send uh, uh, a notice to everybody and they ask for their opinion. In Cyprus, we do everything, as particularly our built environment without taking into account at all the opinion of the citizens. And that's an example of the Eleftheria Square. I mean, they didn't want to listen to the opinions of the of the wider public. But the European Parliament, however, I have to tell you that for all legislation, uh, which is going to be adopted by the European Parliament, we have the hearings at the initially at the beginning when you are going to uh, draft a report. Uh, we listen to all organizations involved, uh, and uh, either for the environment uh, or for women, 
And uh, we, they have collaborators here. I mean, the Mediterranean Institute uh, for Gender Equalities. Uh, so they are uh, advisors. Uh, uh, and uh, they are telling us what has been done in the different countries. So we have uh, uh, Strasbourg. Uh, uh, we are going to organize uh, uh, the biggest meeting uh, from 5,000 young people in Strasbourg. And uh, these 5,000 young people, they would uh, tell us what they want uh, from of Europe. And uh, don't forget that young people are uh, affected by the financial crisis. I mean, uh, young people and women above all. So uh, we, maybe we do not have what you are saying about uh, the legal framework of every country. And um, uh, we forget about it. Uh, and um, uh, this is up to uh, the... Um, Every country, I mean, many, uh, we have the law of subsidiarity. Um, so uh, it's up to the member states. Uh, so it's a general framework uh, uh, because we have wishes list, in fact. I would like to say this as well. Uh, if we could uh, have uh, from your office uh, to uh, create a, a website, uh, 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 for these issues, either legislation, laws, uh, uh, in order for organizations who wish uh, uh, with uh, their contribution to have their own page, let's say, um, because we have a, 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 a registry uh, and we try to keep it vivid. I mean, uh, which organizations left uh, uh, action? I mean, we try to keep up with the registry. I mean, to have a list with all these organizations and also a calendar. We need to have a calendar. So every organization, whenever you decide to organize, let's say, something, we try to do it. You were not able to do it, so, uh, uh, Commissioner. Please do it to have this calendar. So you can log in before we decide on a meeting, let's say, or on a, a, an event, uh, um, not to go against, I mean, another action. Like, we do not want to organize something if an NGO organizes something similar with the European Parliament because we want to support NGOs and uh, uh, civil, uh, civil society organizations. This is a simple tool which can help us a lot. Another one uh, who wants just to take the floor. Is to maybe have a page where NGOs, CSOs, whatever you want to call them, can go in and list their details and their contact details. Now, I know there are lists here. They are out of date. Some of them were never right in the first place. And I know as well that a lot of European organizations go to specific umbrella organizations here. And I'll t I won't mention names, but one of them that deals with the environment has actually refused Cans for Kids being a member because apparently we're not an environmental organization. So we need something that is impartial and centrally organized so that every organization that is up and running, maybe they need to re-register every year so you're sure they're still doing it. And that keeps you in the frame and it gives us access as well to networking and other organizations. Λοιπόν, η τελευταία ερώτηση από το Facebook από την Ευθυνένη Κρήμα να μείνει εκτό. Είναι για όλου του συμμετέχοντε, από ό,τι κατάλαβα. Πώ πιστεύετε ότι μπορεί να ενισχυθεί ο ρόλο τη θεσμική παρέμβαση των ΜΚΟ, Can we force the institutional intervention of NGOs in order for this not to be the excuse for taking away human rights in Europe? Anybody could reply. I'm sorry, I was on the Greek channel before. I'm sorry if you missed the beginning. It was a question on the Facebook. So I would like to say that about your question on the website, uh, yes, NGOs, they can send uh, their activities. I mean, there is a calendar only for the, for this organization. You have two calendars, one for you and one for the office. Uh, so the NGO Support Center has a database already um, for NGOs. Uh, and we are going to have it uh, at the office. 
and um, uh, about, uh, I mean, this, uh, I believe that uh, uh, for me at this uh, moment, there is not an issue that uh, we, let's say, reduce, they say, reduction of the rights of NGOs or the civil society. I mean, because of the crisis, uh, I think that it is, uh, an, uh, their role is upgraded. This is the way I see it, because they play a very important role within the civil society because of the gaps and uh, uh, that you have and because of lack of reliability uh, or um, uh, vis-a-vis other institutions. So I believe that it's extremely the contrary which is happening. And um, the the president of the republic, in order to uh, because they, he set up this uh, institution so politically, it's highly time for uh, from the st- I mean for the state to recognize uh, the job uh, the the work carried out by the NGOs. It's not a uh, accident uh, what is happening in the mass media. They do pay attention to that. Uh, um, where uh, they, uh, they they promote they are promoting this nowadays. So I think that it is a, uh, the contrary which is happening now because there is the political will to upgrade and support. Uh, because I'm not uh, concerned, and uh, maybe we could uh, uh, reinforce the role of this intervention. And uh, it's um, so there are ways. Microphone, please, uh, Mr. Galur, uh, Kafuris. Yes, um, yes, it is a political message. Uh, they, 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 sh- they should know where to go, where to address themselves in order to exert the pre- uh, pressure. A public consultation. It's an additional tool. Uh, um, I mean, for the intervention on behalf of the civil society and. Uh, as well as I, I and I said already that uh, um, uh, via other tools you want to implement and so on, uh, we will uh, b- 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 put an end to these fears. And uh, I think that at this very moment, it is the contrary which is taking place. Microphone, please. Microphone. Can you use the microphone? I know that you are uh, late. So um, what... Uh, 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 the comment on Facebook, what they want to say, I think, is the fact uh, that uh, there is an increase of extremists in Cyprus and uh, in Europe. And uh, the question, I think, was addressed uh, um, uh, the role that uh, can play. So I think that we, all those who are here today, uh, we have a role to play vis a vis the respect of uh, democratic procedures, both the internal ones and the society's uh, democratic procedures. And the role of NGOs, yes, it, it goes beyond the common good, uh, but I believe that it is uh, uh, also in order for. Um, uh, those who uh, are in charge of these democratic processes. If this doesn't uh, start from the civil society, democratization, as it was mentioned, I mean, by the Bulgarian, the role of the civil society in these countries uh, after 1990. And that is why I, I, I think uh, that uh, uh, in cooperation with the platforms of organizations in Europe, and you are part of this platform, European platform, we are going to play an important role in order uh, for Europe to uh, maintain its democratic levels and in order for the participation of the citizens to participate in democracy. I think that this is what you wanted to say. And um, we do this, uh, uh, I mean, even if we have a legislative framework, it's also important uh, because uh, this we cover these organizations and not to accuse these organizations that they are uh, uh, dealing with these issues because somebody's guiding them and so on and so on and so forth. Thank you. You wanted to say something? Yes, I agree with you. I I agree fully with you. And I believe that when you're talking about social cohesion and uh, the role that you can play when you're talking about uh, uh, you consolidate democracy internally as an example um, for others uh, to copy it. And um, uh, yes, uh, the the civil society, uh, they are um, uh, consolidating democracy, firstly, and they uh, accept pressure on others. That's why we're talking about uh, uh, disparency, control. Um, I do agree with you fully. Very brief, please. Somebody else would like to take the floor. Microphone, please. Microphone, we can't hear. Microphone. So it is uh, exactly about uh, the last two points, uh, because indeed, uh, um, 
this is uh, uh, for the uh, general good. Uh, the state should work together because you have a common, uh, the common enemy, which are the uh, movements against democracy. We thought that they were dead. Uh, so it is to the benefit of all of us uh, because the civil society can help in order for the state institutions to be further reinforced because uh, they need the support by the state. Uh, so thank you for uh, being uh, here until that late. It's ex excellent because uh, I think there is some lunch. Uh, anyway, first uh, um, uh, an announcement. Uh, we uh, mentioned before the home of uh, the volunteer. Uh, I hear I go to have the inauguration at uh, the European public space. Sorry, the European public space will take place here. The European public space. No, this is uh, no, no, no. The European public space is different. Uh, microphone, please. Microphone. Microphone. It is. Uh, I'm sorry. I've. Um, I compiled it with the. I'm sorry. It's my mistake. Said the speaker. So, uh, uh, Thursday, five thirty to seven. So Vasily would be here. And uh, you can put questions to Commissioner Vasiliou. And uh, anybody else? Thursday, do you have something else on Thursday? 